I wonder if you can speak specifically to the unique barriers, determinants, and challenges of young men of color. So that's that's a great place to start uh, or continue. I think we are already pretty lo- far along this conversation. <laughs> uh, you know, I typically start responding to this question, uh, uh, particularly when I'm talking to families with risk factors for dropping out of college. Mm. Uh, we've learned from years of research that gender is predictive. Men are more likely to drop out than women. Race is predictive. Black and brown students are more likely to drop out than others. You know, whether you're attending a four-year or two-year institution is predictive. Four years is more predictive. Uh, Full-time enrollment or part-time enrollment, full-time is more predictive. Uh, Working full-time or part-time versus not working at all, and in this case, working full-time is more predictive. Uh, Being involved in Greek life, uh, or not is predictive. Uh, being involved in Greek life is 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 a is a risk factor. Uh, so when I engage with families, I often start with this reality, and I say to them, "I am working with a black man at a four year institution, many who will have work study or full time employment, uh, and many you know studies will also show." Um, that two of the things that are most helpful to students as they enter in to mitigate, you know, some of the impact that, you know, these risk factors represent is uh, whether or not students are able to articulate their experiences, uh, you know, affectively um, and the education levels of the parents. Uh, You know, one of those we can control when we get to students, uh, the other we cannot in this case, it's the, you know, we can't do anything about the education levels of parents, but we definitely can work with whether students are able to articulate their experiences or not. Uh, So what I am often facing is receiving a young man who often is, you know, carrying, you know, at least five out of the six risk factors for dropping out of school. And the one that we have the most impact on is beginning to help that person develop some affective capacity to describe their experience and also begin to develop an interest in the experiences of others. And I think that's that's really important. So we try to give young men the skills they need to articulate their experiences. And one of the things that is also interesting here is uh, because we, pri- we are preoccupied with risk factors, we sort of create some unintended challenges, I think, for students of color. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we try to teach them uh, that if they just buckle down and work hard in a John Henry S sort of way, uh, they might make sure that they don't have any setbacks. Uh, and often instead they find themselves often alone, uh, struggling to establish meaningful relationships that they can sense or feel is contributing to that, you know, John Henry sort of movement. Uh, but what we know is, as, as mental health practitioners is that relationships require vulnerability. And for many black and brown men, vulnerability is experienced as a weakness. Uh, so this weakness then disrupts or interrupts any real conversation about masculinity or manliness. And there is quite a bit of stigma, uh, so much stigma around vulnerability and weakness uh, that it also becomes a barrier to really exploring the intersections between race and sexuality. Uh, and that barrier has been in place for, for centuries, right? Uh, so I believe a key challenge for young men and, uh, of color is really building, expanding, and accepting a full range of support that will allow them to grow in their ability to, to hold the full range of experiences of being a man of color uh, for themselves, but also for others. And I think that's, that's a big deal. Uh, And that's heavy work that I don't know that we've always been equipped to do for and with uh, young men of color in in higher education. 